Hello everyone. Um, this week I'll be going over quality control and the good documentation practices requirement in quality control department. So I'll take you everyone back to where we were with the type of GMP documents we use in the industry. So we have covered until protocols. This time we are going over specifications. Um, I'll cover little more on test data sheets, but not in uh, details, but in a brief. So it's important to understand the different type of GMP documents we use in any industry. This will help you present yourself better in any interview that you at least have the basic understanding of different type of document industry use and what is their structure look like and hence it will stand you out among the crowd uh, of all the freshmen or graduates who are seeking job and sometime with this type of knowledge you can present yourself uh, as a person who understand that uh, the different documents used in the industry and what are their implications. So I'll take you first of all to a little process. So you have to understand how quality control department works. So first of all, in quality control department, there are two departments. One is raw material quality control and other is finished material quality control. So these two, symbol, uh, these two symbols symbolize the department and their functions. So now all the raw materials we purchase a company, let's say they are manufacturing a tablet. A tablet manufactured by blending, compacting, mixing, um, few ingredi ingredients together and then you make a tablet together which will eventually go to the patient world. So we purchase raw materials such as solvents, uh, some powders and raw materials and packaging materials can vary from um, process to process. So we have pre-approved selected suppliers who provide the material to us. They supply the material and this material goes into our raw material warehouse. As soon as our raw material warehouse get the material, QC raw material get a notification that guys we receive some material from our supplier. Can you take some sample and check um, whether everything is fine and if they are good enough to be used in our facility, we, you will you have to approve them and then only they will um, release them to the manufacturing. So QC raw material went to warehouse, take the sample and then they, they perform the test. Sometimes raw materials do not need extensive QC testing. They just need physical testing, the color, the appearance, the quantity, the vendors, the conditions and all. Otherwise, some raw material require extensive testing, um, chemical, physical and they perform the same test in the lab. Once QC raw material approved, warehouse allow manufacturing the manufacturing symbol is here manufacturing department to use this material and produce the desired product now manufacturing department get the uh, material issued from raw material uh, warehouse and then use it and manufacture the finished product so you can see this is a manufacturing finished product warehouse it's very clean designated slabs each designated um, slab has function of um, which material stored in which condition belong to which product different type of products have been stored with a different stre strength uh, in a different classification so, so that they can be easily tracked and dispensed to the respective market. Now as soon as product goes to the finished product um, warehouse, finished product warehouse informed to the finished product uh, material QC department. That guys manufacturing department has manufactured a product and it's been sitting in our warehouse. We want to know whether they have manufactured it accurately and it can be dispensed or uh, sent to the patient world. QC finished product goes to the warehouse of finished product and take the sample and perform the test. If they found that all the product be manufactured by manufacturing department is meeting the acceptance criteria they will release this product and notify the warehouse or the respective supply chain department that go ahead and supply the material to the respective patient world here. So this is how a process works in quality control department. Now let's see 
एज अ क्वालिटी अश्योरेंस पर्सन वॉट टू एक्सपेक्ट क्वालिटी अश्योरेंस पर्सन एज वेन एवर आई मैंशन सैंपल जस्ट इमेजिन दिस स्लाइड दैट सम वन फ्रॉम रॉ मटेरियल इज गोइंग टू वेयर हाउस एंड टेकिंग दी सैंपल सम वन फ्रॉम फिनिश मटेरियल गोइंग टू फिनिश्ड मटेरियल वेयर हाउस एंड टेकिंग दी सैंपल्स सो ऑल सैंपल्स कम हियर दिस इज स्टेप नंबर वन नाउ यू हैव दी सैंपल इन योर कस्टडी वॉट यू विल डू वी विल चेक विथ रिस्पेक्ट टू विच स्पेसिफिकेशन वी नीड टू परफॉर्म द टेस्ट आई विल गो ओवर दी स्पेसिफिकेशन स्ट्रक्चर रिक्वायरमेंट डिटेल्स लेटर ऑन right now just understand that you have to find the right specification like your manufacturing department has manufactured um and specifications are different raw material and finished so if you are in raw material qc you have to select a raw material specification if you are in finished product qc you have to select a finished product specification so raw material qc has selected a raw material specification of product x y z and then this is for specification test uh, tell us that what type of test we need to perform what type of result we should accept and how these are acceptable or what should be the process we will be following now you got the specification what next we need a test data sheet i have i have utilized um, e test data sheet here some company use manual test data sheet some company use um automated system such as sap so just consider that a piece of paper you are performing a simple test raw material perform some simple test for example you receive raw material rubber stopper in your warehouse you been to the rubber stopper you have a rubber stopper in your hand and what you have to verify what what test need to be done it's mentioned in the specification so you take the specification you read it test number 1 is see whether the supplier of this rubber stopper is xyz supplier yes this is from the xyz supplier so if you can see here it says um length surface visuals and then the specifications the same specifications are mentioned in the uh, specification like what should be the limit 5.1 to 5.5 and you inspected and you found okay result was 5 and um, you confirm the result and you sign it off in a digital manner similarly in a paper manner you will just write down these three sections will already be there serial number test specification result column you need to fill and then you will sign it off in the last section now based on all these test you perform quality control will populate a certificate of analysis what is a certificate of analysis certificate of analysis is this that we have performed some test on the raw material or finished material as per what as per the specification specification says you have to perform water test water limit should be between 10 to 15 and we found the water limit was 13 which is acceptable so you mention everything in the certificate of analysis then at the end you says from the certificate of analysis i believe this product is passing all the results and falling between the standard limit mentioned in this specification hence we believe that this product can be released to the patient world and you either pass it or fail it as a quality control person rest i'll tell you more that how the process work just need to understand receive the sample select this specification select or record the test result in test data sheet company has manual company has automated out of the test data sheet make a certificate of analysis show that whether it your test or either the product is passing or failing now let's discuss right now how our specification structure look like so specification structure look like this i have downloaded this from a, a product uh, food processing website it has a company name you put your logo what um for what you are writing this is specification so you can write raw material specification for rubber stopper raw material specification for primary label raw material um, specification for solvent if you are using solvent if you are using compressed air if you are using nitrogen every single raw material goes into the industry has a raw material specification even for example if you are using um a weighing balance or weights that um not weighing balance just consider a rubber stopper 
so if if you are receiving a rubber stopper from a um, supplier you will in, you will use a raw material specification meant for that supplier for that raw material and check whether it's meeting the required specification so what a specification contains specification contain name of the material raw material code every company has a unique code for their each raw material finished material or every single entity that's been tested or utilized in manufacturing so that you can track them at the later on if any deviation happen who is the approved supplier approval date of the specification supplier order code and specification issue date when this specification was issued now material specification include description you will include the description so as i mentioned if you are writing a specification for rubber stopper so you will include a description how a ideal rubber stopper look like what is the si size shape color um, structures how many um, what is the thickness then compos composition what it made of uh, then you you enter the method of productions um delivery method storage condition at what temperature it should be stored the self life uh, preparation and handling um this is for a um, food one so i'm not going detail but i'm mentioning that you can make a uh, raw material or finished product specification as required in the pharmacopeial requirements like every market like us tga australia mhra they have their own requirement that in order to release a product to our market if it's a raw material you should you should use these many test if it's a packaging material use these test if it's a finished material product um if it's a antibiotic cephalosporin or any type of drugs they have a specific testing criteria and you need to perform those test and you need to set the limits so you write all those test here and you will set the limit here similarly um, you will include the special requirement or regulatory requirements in case any require and uh, every company has a customized sections as well in the specification so specification is the structure look like this however it vary based on the market requirement pharmacopeial requirement and um, test that we need to perform so this section test and limit so let's say you are writing water contain test then you will include a limit here that not more than 15 and i don't know what qc limit look like um ph ph should be between 5.1 to 7.0 it can be wrong but consider this as an example so you can include more test as it's uh, mentioned in the respective pharmacopeia so this is how a um, specification look like which has a test and limit and now it will say you have to perform test as per sop like water content test can be performed through carl fisher so how a carl fisher operate it will be mentioned in qc sop 134 so one when you are in qc you go to this pack and you'll say okay i need to check water content and how i'll be doing it it's mentioned in this sop so you will pick that sop open it and you perform the test and where you will enter the result you will enter the result here that water content should be 5 uh, more, not more than 15 and what your results came here you enter here so there are three documents working together one specification one this sop and you are writing your results in this test data sheet and after that you take the cfa make the result and this is how the process goes so um i was i know it, it was very brief but i try to un undergo a process to tell you that how the process flows what type of documents we need as a quality control personnel and what are their importance and how they look in manual world and automated world test data sheet and specification can vary from company to company product to product market to market try to grasp them see what they are on internet and uh, i wish you all the good luck thank you so much